Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A4 from 2003 Patna Math Competition. Suppose we have two quadratics that absolute value of one is less than or equal to absolute value of the other, and we want to show that the discriminant of uh, the smaller one is less than or equal to the discriminant of the larger one. Both of them are in absolute value. Okay, so here is my thought process in order to solve the problem. When I looked at this, I decided to substitute x by values that give us uh, some extreme cases. So for example, what would be the maximum of this and what would be the minimum of this? So if I substitute x by the largest possible value, which well, it would be basically infinity, then I would get some hopefully meaningful inequality. And if I get the, uh, if I replace x by a value that gives me the smallest value on the right, then I would get hopefully something meaningful. So what do, what do we mean by uh, maximum? Well, we have to let x go to infinity, but if x goes to infinity, both sides are infinity. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not going to give us anything helpful. We are going to first divide by x squared, and then we allow x to go to infinity. So we're going to look at a plus b over x plus c over x squared. We know this is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus b over x plus c over x squared. Then we allow x to approach infinity and that gives us absolute value of a less than or equal to absolute value of capital A. So that's when we replace x by its largest value. Now um, if we replace the right hand side by the smallest value initially I thought well the smallest value would be negative b over 2a for x but there's an absolute value here so that takes uh, makes things a bit more complicated but it, I did replace negative b over 2a to see what I get so if I replace x by negative b over 2a then I would get a times negative b over 2a squared plus b times negative b over 2a plus c this gives us b squared over 4a minus b squared over 2a plus c. Taking the common denominator of 4a, we would get b squared here minus 2b squared here and then plus 4ac. So in fact, that does give us the 4ac minus b squared over 4a. So it does give us something similar to what we are trying to prove. Okay, since I have absolute values, I can negate both of these two quadratics. And if I negate both of the quadratics, the discriminants also are not going to change. So if I have, uh, consider negative b squared minus 4 negative a times negative c, that's the same as b squared minus 4ac. So what does that mean? It means I can assume that a and a are both positive. So let's make that assumption. Now, having said the fact that we cannot really replace x by negative b over 2a to get anything meaningful because that's not really the minimum on this side, um, I decided to replace it by the actual minimum. So what is the minimum of the absolute value? It could be either the vertex because it's a quadratic and it could be um, either completely above the x-axis or if it hits the x-axis, then it would be the roots of the quadratic. So there's basically two cases I'll have to consider. So the first case is for the second uh, quadratic, b squared minus 4ac is in fact greater than or equal to 0. So what does that mean? It means b squared, it means the second quadratic ax squared minus bx plus bx plus c can be factored into a times x minus r times x minus s. Now we're going to replace x by r to see what we get. We get absolute value of a r squared plus b r plus c is less than or equal to, on the other side we just get 0. So what does that mean? It means a r squared plus b r plus c is in fact 0. So the second quadratic also has a factor of r, so x minus r. So we would get a times x minus r, and there would be another factor, maybe x minus t, that's less than or equal to absolute value of capital A, x minus r times x minus s. And this is true for every x. 
If we divide by absolute value of x minus r, we would get absolute value of x times x minus t is less than or equal to absolute value of a times x minus s for all x that is not equal to r. But because both of the two functions on the right side and left side are continuous, if we take the limit, if we approach x, if we approach r, then we're going to get this inequality holds for x equals r as well. So what does that mean? It means I would get absolute value of x times x, uh, a times x minus t is less than or equal to absolute value of a times x minus s for every real number x. Now I can substitute x equals s and if I do that that would give me absolute value of a times s minus t is less than or equal to 0 which means s equals t. So the two quadratics are a times x minus r times x minus s. This is the first quadratic. This is a x squared plus b x plus c. And the other quadratic is a times x minus r times x minus s. And this one is a x squared plus b x plus c. Now let's evaluate a, b, c in terms of uh, r, s, and a, and then plug in into the discriminants that they gave us and see what inequality we're going to get. So b is going to be minus r plus s times a, and c is going to be r times s times a. So if we look at absolute value of b squared minus 4ac, this would be absolute value of r plus s squared times a squared minus 4a times rsa. We can factor absolute value of a and we're going to end up getting r plus s squared minus 4rs. So this is one side. The other side absolute value of b squared minus 4ac for the exact same reason is absolute value of a times r plus s squared minus 4rs. Now remember that what we got at the very beginning was that absolute value of a is less than or equal to absolute value of capital A. So since absolute value of lowercase a is less than or equal to absolute value of capital A, absolute value of b squared minus 4ac is in fact less than or equal to absolute value of b squared minus 4 capital A capital C. Okay, so this was the case when the second quadratic has a root. So case two. Case two is when b squared minus 4ac is in fact negative. So this one took me a little bit longer uh, because the first idea that I had was to replace x by negative b over 2a. So the inequality that we have is absolute value of ax squared plus bx plus c is less than or equal to absolute value of ax squared plus bx plus c. We know this one. Now if we replace by negative b over 2a, what we're going to end up getting is a times negative b over 2a squared plus b times negative b over 2a plus c. And this is less than or equal to. On the other side, we discussed this one before. We did the calculation before. We get this divided by 4a. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, then this quantity, so the quantity absolute value of ax squared plus bx plus c, is always greater than or equal to, it's in fact positive because the discriminant is negative and a is positive. We know a is positive. So this is greater than or equal to its minimum. And the minimum, we did the calculation, which is b squared minus 4ac over 4a. So that tells us that b squared minus 4ac over 4a is less than or equal to the same thing for the other quadratic. Now, let's multiply this one by 
absolute value of A less than or equal to absolute value of capital A and the 4 of course cancels and that gives us absolute value of B squared minus 4AC is less than or equal to absolute value of capital B squared minus 4 capital A capital C. So this is the case when the discriminant of the first one and the second one are both negative. So let's look at the third case. Third case is B squared minus 4AC is negative and the other one B squared minus 4AC is in fact positive or perhaps zero. Okay. So this wasn't quite obvious what to do um, because if I replace negative b over 2a then I cannot just drop the absolute value. So this is what I did for this one and this case was really the most difficult case for me when I was trying to solve the problem. So ax squared plus bx plus c we know this one is always positive because the discriminant is negative and the leading coefficient is negative uh, positive. This is greater than or equal to absolute value of ax squared plus bx plus c. So what I notice is that since it is greater than or equal to absolute value, it is greater than or equal to both ax squared plus bx plus c. And also negative of that. Negative ax squared negative bx minus c is less than or equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. This one gives me a quadratic that is always positive. So both of these give us two quadratics that are always positive. So the first one is capital A minus lowercase a x squared plus b minus bx plus c minus c. This is a quadratic that is always greater than or equal to zero. If a quadratic is greater than or equal to zero, its discriminant must be negative or zero. So b minus b squared is less than or equal to 4 times a minus a times c minus c. So let's expand this. We get b squared plus lowercase b squared minus 2 capital B times lowercase b less than or equal to 4 ac plus 4 ac minus 4 a capital C minus 4 capital A lowercase c. The second one tells us something similar but this time is the sum. We have b plus b x plus c plus c. This is always greater than or equal to zero and since this quadratic is always greater than or equal to zero its discriminant must be non-positive. Okay, so let's multiply this out and see what we get. If we multiply this out, we get b squared plus b squared plus 2 lowercase b capital B minus 4ac minus 4 capital A capital C minus 4 lowercase a capital C minus 4 capital A lowercase c is less than or equal to 0. So we have this inequality and we also have the one on top. Now if you add these two, the two BBs cancel. On the other side, we have this term and this term. So if we bring it to the left, both of them become positive and these are both negative. So if we add the two, we get twice lowercase b squared plus twice capital B squared minus both of them are 4ac, so we get minus 8, uh, capital A, capital C, less than or equal to 0. Now, let's bring it to the other side. We get b squared and divide by 2, minus 4ac is less than or equal to 4ac minus capital B squared. So now, we know that b squared minus 4ac is negative for capital B squared minus 4 capital A capital C. That's negative. But the other one is positive. What that means is that this side is absolute value of B squared minus 4AC. And this side is also absolute value of B squared minus 4AC. And that is exactly the inequality that they wanted us to show. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.